creates a new window into just how far the former president went to overturn the election that he lost. We've already heard the phone call of him pressuring Georgia officials to find him votes that he was not entitled to. Not to mention his phone call to Arizona Governor Doug Ducey to overturn the election results in Arizona. And now the Detroit News is reporting on recordings that they've reviewed in which he is pressuring Detroit area election officials to do the same. CNN's Marshall Cohen joins us now with more. Uh, Marshall, this, there's clearly a pattern emerging here. One state after another, Trump trying to dip into the local state of affairs and influence the results, interfere with the results. So I want to be clear. We have not heard this tape for ourselves, but the details were reported by the Detroit News. This is November 2020. Trump lost in Michigan. He lost by more than 100,000 votes. It's time for the election canvassers in Detroit to do their job and certify the results so that the election can be finalized. On the day or around the time of the certification, Trump calls these local officials, Republicans, trying to twist their arm to convince them not to certify. And according to the Detroit News, here is some of what he said. Quote, we can't let these people take our country away from us. Quote, everyone knows Detroit is crooked as hell. Uh, that's where he started. There was also Ronna McDaniel. She was on the phone. She is the chairwoman of, chairwoman of the RNC. She told them, do not sign it. We will get you attorneys. Do not sign the certification. Trump says, we'll take care of that. Incredible revelations. Trump also went on to say, how could anybody sign something when so many, uh, there's so many more voters than people? That's a false claim that dead voters cast ballots in Detroit. So he was peddling false claims, trying to twist their arm, trying to convince them not to certify. It worked. They tried to take back their votes to decertify, but it was too late. They had already uh, set the certification process into motion. Uh, and of course, Trump couldn't undo it once he lost. And, and again, you know, this is looking back at 2020, but let's not forget that Trump is running for presidency again, right? And could lose. And so what does this tell us about potential tactics? How does this fit into the ongoing criminal cases against the former president? Yeah, he's feeling pretty good about his standing in the polls now, but he could lose. And if he does lose, he might try to overturn it again. But for the criminal cases with Jack Smith, it's not clear if Jack Smith has this tape. He probably does, or he might, because he had such a wide-reaching investigation. But it's clearly powerful evidence, Trump's own voice, and it fits a pattern. As you mentioned in the, in the top, Pam, Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, one state after another, trying to twist people's arm, pressure them to break their oaths to the Constitution, pressure them to overturn results of a lawful election. In Jack Smith's words, Trump tried to uh, disenfranchise millions of voters by doing things just like this. Yeah, and for context for our viewers, Trump would have had to have three states flip, three states that had voted for Biden legally. They would, he would have had to have three states flip in order sure. for him to actually win unlawfully. And so that's important context as you look at the pattern around these phone calls to these various states. Has the former president or, or Ronald McDonald responded to this reporting? You know, it's pretty incredible that they put out a response so quickly. Uh, clearly, this is something that has rattled them. Yes, the Trump campaign put out a statement. I'll read it for you. They said, quote, all of President Trump's actions were taken in furtherance of his duty as president of the United States to faithfully take care of the laws and ensure election integrity. But Pam, it is hard to take that statement at face value that this was part of his official duties as president. The Jack Smith indictment says very clearly that these were not his job. As, this was not his job. This was actually the opposite of his responsibility. This was a, a defrauding of the United States and a, an attempt to overturn an election. According to Jack Smith, but of course, you know, Trump has pleaded not guilty and denies any wrongdoing. Right. But we know the facts. We see the evidence, some of that evidence emerging that you just laid out with this recording that, again, we want to note CNN has not heard. We're basing this on Detroit News um, and their description of what is in this recording between Trump, these two local officials in Detroit, and uh, Ron McDaniel with RNC. Marshall Cohen, stay right here with us. I want to bring in Atlantic uh, Magazine contributor and conservative lawyer George Conway. George, this recording obviously gets at the heart of the case Jack Smith is building against the former president that he actively conspired to overturn the 2020 election. How big of a deal is this? Help us put this into context. 
Well, it's thoroughly consistent with the criminal conspiracies that have been alleged by the Department of Justice, uh, by Jack Smith in, in the Washington, D.C. federal case, and by Fonnie Willis in the Georgia Fulton County prosecution. And it's very much reminiscent of the phone call that you mentioned that had where, where President Trump attempted to coerce and bully uh, Secretary of State in Georgia, uh, Raffensperger, uh, to uh, uh, stop his, uh, to interfere with his duties in, in certifying an election. And the same thing here. I mean, he, they, there was no factual basis given uh, for the claiming that there was fraud and there was intimidation involved. And according to the, the Detroit News article, it's suggested by a former elections official there that in essence what was happening here, he suggests, is that they were being induced by uh, the, the, by the, by the, by the promise of legal protection by the promise of, of getting attorneys for them uh, to violate their official duties, which potentially could be an additional crime under Michigan law. I think it's, I think an interesting question would be whether uh, the Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel uh, has this uh, tape or ha has been aware of this tape. Certainly the call was known, although the substance of the call, the details of the call were not known publicly. Um, she, ha Dana Nessel, the, the Attorney General of Michigan, has charged the fake electors there as we know. And, you know, the question is whether, you know, whether they're, they, I, I think it's not necessary for uh, Jack Smith to add this to his case, but it's certainly consistent with his case. And the real question is whether or not authorities in Michigan will seek to prosecute uh, Ms. McDaniel or Mr. Trump. So I want to follow up on that. Um, you say that you don't think it's necessary for Jack Smith to add this to his case, but, you know, he's trying to to build out what appears to be a pattern, a conspiracy, right, of Trump trying to overturn the election results. And in the Georgia case, oh, absolutely. That, phone call, it, that was 11,000 votes, right, that he, he said, go find these 11,000. I can't remember the exact number. In this case, we should point out that President Biden won Michigan by more than 148,000 votes, beating Donald Trump by more than 322,000 votes in Wayne County, where these canvassers were from, right? Why, why wouldn't yeah, I, this be I, more I'm not, critical? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I, I, I'm not minimizing it. I just think the case that Jack Smith has already built based upon, you know, the, the false electoral cert the elector certifications and his conduct on January 6th and his overall efforts, uh, what he did in the White House as he, you know, watched the insurrection and basically cheered it on. I mean, I think the case is just strong enough as it is. I think this is consistent with the case. I think I think what it's what what lawyers call cumulative evidence of his uh, criminal intent. And I and I, I think it's certainly something that, that Smith will want to look at and may want to put into his uh, trial plan. Um, but it's you know, he's he's got a pretty good case already. And we don't know whether he has this recording or not, but it's certainly interesting. Marshall Cohen, I want to bring right. you back. Because as we saw in 2020, time and time again, our, our system is built on people doing the right thing, withstanding pressure. Now, uh, even though these two local officials tried to rescind their votes to certify after this phone call for Trump, from Trump, they were unsuccessful. How can we use this as a warning as we look ahead of Trump's potential tactics if he loses again? And, and how do we ensure these local officials don't cave? Well, looking ahead to next year, there's some good news and bad news. The bad news is that a lot of professional election officials across the country have walked away under the threats, the intimidation, the violence, uh, and it's not really a good line of work anymore these days because you could get doxxed, you can have someone like Donald Trump attacking you on social media, it could ruin your life as we saw with Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss down in Atlanta who were defamed by Giuliani and others. But here's the good news, last year, 2022, there were key elections for Secretary of State offices and other election officials across the country. A lot of election deniers were running to run elections next year. Many of them lost in places like Michigan, uh, Arizona, uh, people who did not want to follow the law were trying to run, trying to get into those positions of power, uh, and they were often beaten by people who have made it a, a part of their campaign to say, you know what, even if you don't like the results of the election, I will follow the law, I will certify the results, I'm not going to try to meddle because of somebody pressuring me from the outside. I think that's really important context for sure. George, bringing you back in, is it significant to you that the former president allegedly offered to provide lawyers for these canvassers if they went along with his plan to reject the certification? Yeah. Yes, as I said, as the uh, election official in 
Michigan, the former election official who was quoted in the Detroit News article, said, I mean, that's potentially an inducement to someone to violate their official duties. And, you know, potentially, in other words, potentially bribery. I think we'd have to know more facts, exactly what they were promising to do, and, and, and in order to determine whether or not it's a case that, that's worth bringing. But it's certainly, it's certainly very corrupt. All right, George Conway, Marshall Cohen, thank you so much.